Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son get together and talk about science fiction, fantasy, and other nerdy things we enjoy. Today, we're here with a book blast episode, just spoiler light re reactions to book three of Era 2 of Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series. So we're talking about the Bands of Mourning. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to like it down below. If you're not already a subscriber to our channel, please join the hordes that are finding us. We'd love to have you here for all the fun. And look down in the show notes for other ways you can connect with us, including our Discord server, there's an invite down there, social media, and Patreon. Okay, Zach, last time we talked about Mistborn, we were talking about your favorite of Era 2. The Shadows yes, of Cell. And this, this time one's we're talking mine. about my least favorite. No, no, <laughs> this is my favorite, man. This is it. No, no, it's not. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of good things in this book. Like Steris's awesomeness. I don't feel like it's as good as in other books. Um, uh, this is a Marisi and Steris, really a Steris growth book uh yes and we love sarah's in this book absolutely 100 percent. from start to finish more and more we, we got to see little tidbits of it previously but this book is like look she's got her quirks people aren't gonna like it she's pretty great in so many ways steris is a flawed character in that she just has you said it quirks she has some serious personality quirks that hold her back that also make her awesome in certain ways, but just self-limitations she has imposed upon herself. And yet here we see her turn some of that into awesomeness. And I love it. I love it. My biggest eh about this book is the actual story. The actual story that takes place is just like, okay. It's the le least twisting and mysterying of the books. It's the most like classic adventure as opposed to the mystery, almost noir adventure that you get in one, two, and four. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it it's a little bit out of the mold of this series. That could be a great thing for it. I think it's a little bit of a weaker point. And there is a specific plot device in the shape of an object of sorts that I still stand by saying some of it's a little funky fast and loose and it's not objectively wrong but it's not what it says it is are you saying sanderson did some revisionist history in in working with this device no but everyone who thinks things about it is objectively wrong about things about it or maybe even what it is to a certain extent and it's one of those things where i'm like this may have precedent and meaning relevance later on in another era but right here right now it was used for a function but i think we as readers were lied to directly and gone yeah you know you were lied to but i'm not going to tell you how and why yet interesting for people who haven't read this yet those comments make no sense, I think. But for those of you who know, uh, you either agree or disagree with my son now. <laughs> it's interesting, then, that this is your least favorite, but my greatest favorite. And maybe it is because the style of this book is different than the other three. And that worked for me where it wasn't what you were looking for in the same way. I will say, had this been a trilogy and this was the end, it would have been okay. It would have been satisfying. It wouldn't have been completely satisfying, and it wouldn't have been what I wanted, but it does actually give a nice little, ooh, cool, with some loose ends. Yeah, in some ways, you know, then Brandon Sanderson is, you know, bucking the trend. Trilogies are the thing, okay? I mean, you can do epic sagas, or you can do trilogies. Not as many times, I mean, it happens, but not as many times does an author just do four. I mean, we certainly did The Acts of Cain not too long back, but even there you described books three and four as the third part. You know, So it was still kind of a trilogy just written over four books. And here he has a trilogy, and then he's going to tack on the fourth book. And we'll talk about the fourth book later, but you're saying in some ways this could have been the end of the story, and it would have been okay. It wouldn't have answered all the questions. It wouldn't have been the end. 
But it and is not every, yeah, to not an every arc trilogy that we does. see. A story that is told throughout this series, this era, does get told here and ends here. Yep. It makes you wonder, did he perhaps think this would be the end at one point? No. And then his brain shifted to what else he wanted to do? Not even a so? little. Okay. Not even a little bit. Any last takes before we wrap on this one? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> It's like, move along with this book. I'm done. I'm, I'm good. not against this book. I just, <laughs> I don't need to sit and keep talking. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Again, let us know your thoughts. Put some comments down there. React to Zach. And we'll respond. We always do. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.